Hi, this is a quick video to show off uh, Microsplat's mesh module with the procedural texturing module. Uh, it adds some custom features for this um, for this mode. Uh, so I'm going to turn that on, and it'll regenerate the shader. Um, so if you're not familiar with the procedural texture module, you might want to watch its actual video uh, to learn how it works. Uh, so there are a couple extra options when we are in um, uh, mesh mode. So first, your slope uh, has a slope source option. So normally, it's just going to use uh, the vertex normal of the train or the object uh, to basically determine the slope and then um, allow you to filter across the object. So this is really useful if you only want to, uh, you know, procedurally put things on, say, the top of rocks like moss. Uh, the other option is combined normal. And what this will do is I'm in the combined texture mode and so I have this underlying object and I would use the normal map of the underlying object to be the slope. So instead of just getting it maybe on the tops, uh, we could actually get it on the tops of the normal map where the normal map faces up. Um, and so if you have really strong uh, normal maps or height maps, then these types of effects can be uh, powerful to do sort of like really micro texturing. Uh, you can do the same thing with the height map. And so your height map can use the combined height map instead. Uh, and so then you can get sort of texture variation uh, based on your height map instead of based on the actual height of the object. And finally, instead of using the cavity map, uh, you can use the combined AO channel um, so that you can use the AO to, again, do little subtexturing. Now, uh, there's no way to generate a cavity map for mesh uh, included, at least right now. Uh, but if you are outputting things from programs, you could output a cavity map or create one yourself. And that format is described in the documentation for the procedural texture module. So let's go down and actually play with um, some of our texturing here. And here we go. So we have two layers right now. And this one is using slope. And that's why we're seeing um, these things only appear on the train. And uh, sorry, on the top parts of the train. And if I adjust those parameters, they all update in real time, just like in the uh, regular mo module. I can add some noise to that, do whatever I want. Um, and then if uh, if this isn't uh, actually visible, then it's going to fall back to um, this texture uh, here, um, which is basically the alpha texture. Um, actually, sorry, this is set to... Yeah, so this is acting as like the um, alpha layer so that we're bleeding through to um, to the original texture here. Um, so if we were to switch that to use one of these other modes. Oh, uh, before I get into that, I want to talk about world space versus local space. Um, so if we are in um, the procedural texture module and we go up to our combined uh, uh, mesh shader sections. This is force local space option. So this is really useful because if, for instance, we are using a height, a height filter instead of the slope filter, uh, the height is going to be in world space by default. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And what we'll see is based on our height range here, which is 0 to, let's say, let's do it 30 meters. And we can come in here and adjust this and end up with um, you know, moss on the on the uh, the top half of our rock based on that uh, curve. Now, if we select the rock and then we were to move this guy up, you'll see that that stays the same, uh, right? Like it, it's still going to do it from uh, the same spot in, in world space. Uh, it's going to texture all the way up. And so, if this was placed on a high cliff, it would be all grass. Whereas if it's placed lower down. It's uh, maybe no grass, right? Um, so that means the texturing is going to change uh, as we move this rock around a level and make new instances of it. And that can be really useful if you want it to match what the train is doing. Maybe you're procedurally texting the train, or maybe you're applying some details to these rocks based on height. But if you set, switch this to be in local space, then that texturing will stay the same uh, no matter what. So let's put that into local space. And so now when I move this guy up and down, we won't see the texturing change, right? It stays with the object. 
Uh, and so in some cases, that's really what you want. Um, now let's play with the uh, one of the other options for the cavity maps or something. Um, so I talked about these earlier. And what we're going to do here is go to our procedural texturing module. And we're going to change the, um, the height filter to be the combined height map. So that is the height map of this texturing below here. And now our world range is basically ignored. And we can come in here and do our height filter. And we can adjust this. And it will actually uh, only appear where the height map is low, for instance. Now, this isn't a terribly great height map, uh, but you you know should be able to get the idea from this. If we were to switch this to, uh, let me just turn this off from combined height map. And let's change the slope source to be uh, the combined normal. And go turn on our slope filter instead of our height filter. And now we can see that we are filtering this based on the slope of that normal map. Um, so, for instance, maybe we only want the grass to appear in those um, cliff areas or just on the flat parts of the, of the normal map. And you'll see that this does not pay attention to the vertex normal, uh, or sorry, the, it uses the world space normal um, to texture this object instead of the vertex normal. And so that's, that gives you, um, you know, kind of a tighter control than when you're using the vertex normal, which is interpolated and things like that. Um, and finally, the cavity source could be the AO channel. We'll go ahead and turn this back to uh, vertex normal. And let me turn off that slope filter. And now we have a cavity filter. And this is using our AO um, data to do the filtering. And so there we're getting like, based on the AO channel, we're getting little bits of, of moss blended in based on that ambient occlusion channel. Um, so, you know, you could also provide your own cavity maps if you don't want to use the AO, but I thought it was nice just to be able to use existing data in the combined mode uh, to do this. This wouldn't be available, obviously, in the um, modes where you're not using combined shader because you wouldn't have a base normal map and things like that. Um, so I think that's it for this video, uh, and hope you uh, got something out of it.